So that is it for qualifying here at a very, very hot French Grand Prix at the Paul Ricard circuit. And we did have quite a few surprises in qualifying. And we're going to go through them right now in this review of qualifying from France. But let's first, before we get into the teams and look at how they did, let's first get into the results of qualifying here in France. So... On pole position, of course, Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas second, and Leclerc third, Verstappen fourth. Amazingly, a McLaren third row lockout on genuine speed uh, with Norris head of science, then Vettel P7, Ricardo P8, Gasly P9, Giovinazzi very nicely in P10. And then outside the top 10 in P11 is Albon, then followed by Raikkonen, Hulkenberg, Perez, Magnussen. And then knocked out in Q1 was Kvyat. Grosjean, Stroll, Russell, and Kubica. But let's now go into the teams and start off with Mercedes, who, of course, easily had the best car in qualifying. No surprises about that. Their car is on rails around this type of circuit, with them setting new track records. Lewis Hamilton, new track record of 128.3. Unbelievable lap time and a very good performance when it mattered most from Lewis Hamilton at the end of qualifying. And as long as Lewis Hamilton, I think, gets into turn one in first place, I think Lewis Hamilton, for the race win tomorrow, will be absolutely fine and should extend his lead in the Drivers' Championship. Valtteri Bottas, you have to say, very scruffy in his final attempts of uh, getting pole position. Definitely could have done better, but I think at the end of the day, Hamilton was saving his pace again for when it mattered most. Uh, most, And when it comes to tomorrow's race, of course, Mercedes are absolutely the favourites. And they are definitely going to get a 1-2 because they have easily the best car on the grid. Next up is Ferrari, who despite Charles Leclerc finishing P3. And Charles Leclerc, by the way, did very well to finish in P3 because the Ferrari at times was not that quick. Uh, so, yeah, good there from Charles Leclerc. But Sebastian Vettel is really the, the headline for Ferrari for, in a bad way as he qualified in P7, not because of an issue, not because of him going off track, because he he didn't have any grip on his final lap and didn't have what he needed to be in the top four on the grid, which is where he should have been. And he really did bottle, I have to say, his final attempt in qualifying three and is now facing... I think a tough race tomorrow, and I, I think he does have a real tough uh, job of trying to get onto the podium. I just don't see how he can do so, because the Ferrari car, when it comes to race pace, is not that good. Normally, qualifying is the highlight of Ferrari's weekend. So, I think Ferrari are in for a tough race tomorrow, and I have to say, with their qualifying result, they have definitely disappointed. It should have been a second row lockout, but it's only P3 and P7. Next up is Red Bull. Max Verstappen P4. I think Max did the best he could. The Red Bull just isn't quick enough to beat Ferrari unless one of their drivers like Sebastian Vettel makes uh, errors or doesn't, you know, do a good final attempt in qualifying. The Red Bull really is not quick right now, and I think Max did well to out-qualify the two McLarens of Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz, and starts P4, which for me is a very good position for him, because the Ferrari, again, is likely to have poor race pace and bad tyre wear, and because tyre wear tomorrow is going to be very, very important, I honestly think Max Verstappen has a very good opportunity of finishing on the podium, so Looking good for Verstappen. The Red Bull pace in qualifying, not that great, but I think it is looking good for Verstappen. But Pierre Gasly, P9 on the grid. I'm sorry, he's not good enough. He is not good enough. You cannot be eight tenths of a second away from your teammate. I'm sorry, you, you cannot. I don't care who your teammate is. It is unacceptable to be that far off. Um, it just is. He should have been right in there with the McLarens and should have been capitalising on Sebastian Vettel's poor final attempt. But no, qualifies P9, also starts on a soft compound tyre for tomorrow and that will really, in a bad way, affect his race. And I think Gasly will struggle to finish in the points. But for Max Verstappen, at least, for Red Bull, there is a possibility 
of a podium. But now, uh, but now let's go on to the midfield and get into Renault first. Renault, compared to Canada, they don't have, of course, as quick of a car. And that was kind of to be expected, but I think Renault will be moderately satisfied with their result. Daniel Ricciardo, P8. I think Ricciardo did, honestly, the best he could. They don't have the best midfield car. I think McLaren have that. So I think Ricciardo, honestly, did the best he could. Nico Hülkenberg, P13. He'll be very disappointed with that mistake he made at the Mistral Chicane on his final attempt in Q2. And I think Hülkenberg definitely could have been a P8, P9 on the grid. Because the Renault car is definitely good enough for that type of position. So, Renault, again, I think with Ricardo and where he is, they will be moderately satisfied. But definitely looking for more in the race tomorrow. Because they want to finish uh, in a better position than just 8th and 13th. And I think they will be targeting a double points finish at their home Grand Prix. But now, let's go on to McLaren. What a performance in qualifying. Easily the best performance of any team in qualifying considering uh, their car. You have to say, yes, Mercedes are so dominant out front, but that is to be expected. For McLaren, to qualify where they did is, is absolutely unbelievable. Lando Norris P5, Carlos Sainz P6. By the way, Lando Norris was only 10 thousandths of a second away from finishing P4. That's how quick McLaren were in qualifying great there for them and also great for the races uh, for the races that they start on the medium compound tires so if they can utilize that tire well compared to the other teams and the medium compound is definitely the compound you want to start on for the race you never know mclaren they could finish in the top five and six they absolutely could because the car also does tend to have good race pace as we have seen not only this season, but in the last couple of years. So McLaren are really looking good going into tomorrow's Grand Prix. Absolutely, they are, from a team point of view, the standout performers. Let's go on now to Alfa Romeo. Antonio Giovinazzi, I have to say, very good performance. P10 out qualifying Kimi Raikkonen. His final attempt uh, in qualifying in Q3 could have been better because I think he made a mistake and that's why he was five seconds off pole. But P10 on the grid is still, for me, good enough. And I think we have to say absolutely well done and bravo for him doing what he did. I think Kimi Raikkonen, by the way, will be disappointed to finish up in P12 because you would expect Kimi Raikkonen to be the fastest Alfa Romeo car. And if he was in the top 10, I think Kimi could have probably been right there with Pierre Gasly, if not ahead. The Kimi will be disappointed, but at least for him, he gets to start on the harder compound tyres because, of course, he starts outside the top 10 and you can start on whatever compound you want. So for the race, as long as he gets a good enough start and doesn't get involved in any chaos, I think Kimi Raikkonen could be in for a points finish for sure. So Alpha looking better, but again, big well done to Antonio Giovinazzi. Next up is Haas. Haas, I have to say, absolutely awful. P15 and P17 in qualifying. That will be a P15 and P16 start for the race because of Danny Kvyat's grid penalty. As Kvyat, of course, as we'll get on to in a moment, uh, has a grid penalty for a new uh, additions or new additions to his power unit. Yeah, Haas, oh, so, so poor. I can't believe after how they were in Spain and even Monaco, I can't believe they have fallen this far off the pace. They have one of the worst cars in Formula 1 right now. It's such a poor car. It doesn't look comfortable to drive. It looks all over the place, especially on those tyres. And I just don't see where they're going right now. And I think for tomorrow's race, they have absolutely no chance in hell of finishing in the points. Because we know qualifying, like Ferrari, is normally their best part of the, uh, the weekend. And they've qualified P15 and P17. So it's not going to get any better. It will probably get even worse for the Haas team from here. Next up, Toro Rosso. Alexander Alvin, I just want to shout out another good performance by him. P11 on the grid. I think that's the best he could have done. I don't think the Toro Rosso car in qualifying trim is a top 10 runner. But I will say, because he's the first runner to start 
on whatever tires he wants to, which is likely to be a harder compound of tire. I think Albon is really, really in a good position for a points finish. And I think, honestly, he is a dark horse for that because... We know the Toro Rosso very good when it comes to race pace. Normally their race pace is one of the best in the midfield up there with McLaren and at times Renault. So I think Toro Rosso could absolutely have Albert and maybe Kvyat if he capitalises uh, at the start on a few, you know, incidents, crashes, uh, you know, people cutting the corners, stuff like that. If he can capitalise on that, Kvyat could also be right up there. So I think Toro Rosso... A decent qualifying, but I think the race tomorrow will be, honestly, even better for them. And the final team in the midfield, of course, is Racing Point. Sergio Perez, P13. I think Perez, honestly, um, or sorry, P14. I think Perez, honestly, did the best he could. The Racing Point is probably the worst midfield car. Maybe you could argue it's better than the Haas, but I think the Racing Point is the worst car in the midfield. So Perez, I think, did well to qualify P14. And then for Lance Stroll, P18. Even though, yes, the Racing Point car's not that good. I'm sorry. Again, poor, poor, poor by Lance Stroll. Getting knocked out in Q1 again when Perez was in Q2 and wasn't too far off, um, I believe, getting into Q3. So, I'm sorry, Lance Stroll has no excuses. His qualifying speed is, quite frankly disgusting honestly it's that bad and of course williams are at the very back but that's it for this qualifying review and i think the qualifying session we've had today ahead of tomorrow's very hot grand prix we're going to have in france i think it really has set us up for what is going to be a very exciting grand prix at paul ricard